Marhaba friends, let us see how we can run macOS in a virtual machine on Windows using Windows Subsystem for Linux version 2 using QEMU. I assume you are using the latest version of Windows 11 or Windows 10 and I assume that you are, as you can see, I'm using the latest version of Windows 11 and I assume that you have installed Windows Subsystem for Linux. And as you can see, I have already already installed it. I have three distributions, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed, and Arch. You can use Ubuntu. I'm going to use an Arch. So the first thing that we need to do is to update our system. So let me quickly check. And we are up to date. This is, this is the optimal point that you should be having. All right. And as you can see, I have nothing on my system as of now. So we are going to follow a guide, the most famous the Rucolia guide by OSX KVM and he says that we can install macOS with QMU KVM on Linux. But yes, since we are running Linux through Windows subscription for Linux on Windows, we can also install it on Windows. That is what I thought and I tried. All right. So it says requirements. We need a modern Linux distribution. And obviously I have a modern Linux distribution. So if I hit Archie, then you will see I have a uh, Arch system and it says with Microsoft standard WSL2. Yes, I assume that you will have also have installed something, maybe Ubuntu. And if we check the version of QMU that we have, then we will see that we have the latest version of QMU that is seven. And I have installed it. So I assume you have installed QMU on your system. All right. It says we need a relatively new CPU there are several ways to check it on my system there are there is a command that i can issue called kvm.ok and you must have this thing which says kvm acceleration is available if you have this then we are good to go i mean let's party guys <laughs> all right okay so in the coming down we have to start and it says kvm may need the following tweak on the host, host machine to work so let's paste it and yes, you should get the value one. Anything other than one is bad, but you should get one. All right, we can issue this command too, but after we have cloned the repo. And next up, we need to install QEMU. As I said, I assume you have a Linux distribution with QEMU installed. So I'll skip that step. And after you have installed QEMU, you can issue these commands. I had already issued it, so I will skip it. Next up, let's clone the GitHub repository that will help us to run macOS VM. So once the GitHub repository is cloned, we are going to switch over into that repository and we are going to issue commands that we need to do. OK, now, depending upon the size, the speed of your Internet will take some time. So we are switched over into it and we just want to make sure that we are using the latest bits. So we'll say git pull rebase and we are already up to date now all these commands are in the link that i will give in the description so don't worry now we are going to fetch the mac os that we want to install i am going to go with high sierra depending upon your system configuration you can go with Montre, big Sur, catalina mojave whatever i have a relatively old system so i'm going to go with high sierra okay now since the download is complete we need to convert the dmg file to an img file Again, we issue the command, copying it from the guide. And after some time, the conversion is complete. There were no errors. All right. Now we need to create a virtual hard disk which, on which we will install our macOS system. And it says you have to need to create it on a fast NVMe disk, but we don't have it. So I'm just going to use whatever we have. I say, now you're ready to install macOS, okay? And it gives a little rocket there, copying from my saying lift off, okay? All right, we'll say it, okay, hang on. So this is the script that we need to change. Uh, it says you can just run it, but there are some parameters that we need to tweak depending upon our system, and which you also need. So watch carefully, guys. Okay, so coming down, you see the allocated RAM. You can change it. This is very important. CPU sockets, CPU cores, and CPU threads. Now to figure this out, you have to start your task manager. And if you go to the performance tab, look at the section on the right. It says sockets one, like on my system, I have one socket, four cores, and four logical processor. That means I have one socket, four cores, 
and each, in each of these four cores I have one thread that means I have four uh, logical processors. So, I am going to change it to four CPU cores and one thread per core. So, if one thread per core that means in total four threads and I have eight gigs of RAM so I allocated four. If you have 32 gigs of RAM allocate 16. If you have 32 threads allocate 16. If you have 16 threads, allocate 8, be my guest, I mean you might have a better system than me, so things will work out for you better. I'm going to comment on this line which says monitor STD IO because it will, our machine will be a little lighter and I am on a very low system. Again, we, it sees, check this line here, since I'm running High Sierra, it says note for High Sierra we have to use this line. So we are going to uncomment this line and this line will actually set up your internet. If you are not using High Sierra, then don't uncomment this line. All right. And I commented out the other net dev line. All right. And I think we are good to go. Um, uh, that's okay. Looks good. And we can just bump up this memory to 256. Uh, 128 is fine, but I'll just bump it up to 256. And I think that is the max. We cannot go higher than that. So you can't like go like 512. All right, things look good. I don't think we need to change anything else. So let's get out of here and hit dot slash. Let's open core boot dot sh. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, guys, starting up, starting up. Oh, there was an error. It says invalid CPU topology. Product hierarchy, product of the hierarchy must match max CPUs. Okay, so let me fix it. I think I must have missed something. Okay, let me come down and okay. Yeah, so here's the problem. It says SMP CPU threads and I changed it to one. So it is thinking I have just one uh, CPU on my machine, right? So I am just going to give the value for that since I'm allocating all four cores that I have, threads that I have and I'm just going to write in threads equal to CPU threads. That's it. And I think we should be good to go. Okay. And so I would say, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmani Rahim. Yes, lift off. We have a lift off, guys. See, wow. I mean, and you see, we have the GUI on on Windows, and we did not have to change any export display or other workarounds. And this is all possible through Windows subsystem for uh, Linux graphics (WSLG), as Microsoft calls it. I mean, with Windows subsystem on Linux, they have done really good work. So it's really commendable and I must. OK, so let me walk you through this step and I'll warn you what is going to come next. OK, so let's click on continue. And once this loads up, we are going to format the disk. You see the size is different there because I had to try a different time and I chose a different size. And let's click on erase. and. I'm just going to name it Mac OS High Sierra uh, High Sierra. Okay, if I can spell it that correctly today, yes, and HDD. Okay, that looks good. Mac OS Extended Journal, good, is fine. All right. Now, if you're installing Montre or Catalina, I believe you will have to you will have to take um, APFS. Okay. Now, once this erase is done. Click on uh, done there and it's complete. And if you've installed a macOS system before, this should look very familiar. And I mean, if you followed my videos before on Linux, then it is going to be, it, this, this part is going to be a breeze. So you click next and click on next here on macOS High Sierra and click on next. So it's from here on, it's like click, 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 click. And then I'll tell you what you need to be uh, information uh, worried about. I mean, you not to be not to be worried, but you need to be cogniz cognizant about. Okay, so select the disk that you have formatted and formatted, and uh, click on next. And then now this it says 15 minutes. This will take some time. So okay, this is for this uh, for you to achieve this patience is the name of the game. And after a couple of hours, I believe six hours, this came up. So from here again, click 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 click. You guys know this better than me because you have, guys have been installing macOS more than I have done. Okay, so set up later, skip. I'm just going to show you what I think is good. You can change it to your liking. Okay, I'm going to create a computer account. 
my name hikmat ustad there and express setup uh, click on enable location no okay uh, that is what i think you can do whatever you like don't use and next up we are going to have all right after some time we have a login screen there and if we enter a password and cross our fingers and moment of truth coming up shortly guys let's see what happens so we gave me a tennis ball to play all right all right no problem okay so it keyboard says up assistant continue um left right of the left shift left of the right shift and see looks good guys looks good you see okay um okay mac was high sierra but the display is a problem right we and you see that the graphics display is just 1 mb so i'm gonna fix it if i click on display it says 800 by 600 and uh let me fix it you know what guys if i maximize it it's going to be stretching because i have a 1920 by 1080 monitor and yes i finally fixed it you know what how i fixed it very simple guys just change the uh, vga to vert io you see there i am using vert io and if i click on full screen right now looks almost native right yeah 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 just imagine guys i mean where we have come i mean we are running windows and we, we are running uh, linux inside it through windows subsystem for linux and through that using kvm using qemu we are running mac os and and it's running as if it's like native but okay you have to be cognizant of the fact that this is uh, this is uh, nested kvm this is not kvm on windows directly so yes there are going to be performance issues depending upon your hardware configuration you will have different experience than me your mileage will vary that's it guys thank you so much for your time take care i hope you really like what you see if you have any problems write them down in the comments below and i'll try and answer them thank you so much take care bye bye